The purpose of a proper study of philosophy is to gain a fully defined and consistent view of life based on a clear, first-hand understanding of objective principles. A firm intellectual grasp of objective principles is an absolute requirement to learn to think and judge independently and thereby enable one to achieve rational goals. The most important principle one need grasp to achieve dominion over his being and to achieve his goals, whether he desires to develop larger muscles, a successful business, or a happy marriage, is the law of causality or cause and effect. It was philosophy's discovery and explicit statement of the law of causality that provided man with the intellectual base that made for the vast superiority of Western culture and its control over reality as expressed through the achievements of mathematics, medicine, physics, engineering, and all other sciences. The law of causality states that an entity can act only in accord with its own nature and cannot act otherwise. Or, a rock cannot fly, a muscle cannot grow without the imposition of the requisite stimulus, and man cannot properly exist as anything other than man, i.e. the rational animal. Those who do not possess an explicit understanding of philosophic fundamentals, such as cause and effect, have a very difficult time achieving their goals. Lacking aware of the role of fundamental principles in guiding one's life, they are, for the most part, emotionally driven instead of conceptually directed. They seem to operate on the fuzzy notion that if their mere desire to achieve a goal is strong enough, such will suffice. And having never made it a policy to check for inappropriate mental habits, they semi-consciously resort to the unchallenged premise, more is better. If stated in words, their attitude would be, I want big muscles so badly, if I persevere and go to the gym religiously for hours every day, eventually I'll achieve my goal. After all, everything I've read and heard in the culture suggests that if I'm relentless, if I remain a slave to my art, through sheer dint of unrelenting effort, I must succeed. Well, the joke is on them, how pathetically wrong they are. We live in a reality that is an objective absolute. It is reality and its laws, the laws of nature, which dictate what causes must be enacted to affect the development of a rational mind, the development of a suntan, or the development of muscles beyond normal levels. Neither a wish, a whim, a hope, or dream is sufficient to cause a muscle mass increase. Neither is the application of a false idea or theory blindly accepted. A person exposed to the sun's ultraviolet rays at the equator in summer would have no slightest concern that the intensity of the stress would be high enough to threaten the physiology sufficiently as to cause an adaptive response, a suntan. While the imposition of a high-intensity sunlight stress is the primary causal determinant or first necessary cause, it would not be sufficient cause to affect the development of an optimal suntan. The suntanner's primary concern, his overriding consideration, would be related to secondary and tertiary causes, the proper regulation of the volume and frequency of the exposure time so as not to overdose on the stress stimulus, and incur a sunburn, or in extreme cases, death. A person exposed to high-intensity sunlight stress does not fret as to whether he'll succeed in achieving his goal, an optimal suntan, but only so long as he doesn't overexpose. Bodybuilders utilizing the blind, non-theoretical volume approach to training do fret continuously over the prospect of ever developing their muscles because they know absolutely nothing about the nature of the causes required to affect the development of muscles beyond normal levels. They are completely ignorant of the first cause required by nature, training to failure to stimulate the body's growth mechanism into motion, and they remain solely concerned with volume and frequency. 
Unlike the sun tanner, however, who is rationally concerned with the proper regulation of the exposure of the sunlight stress, the bodybuilder has an irrational obsession with overimposing the training stress. The theory of sun tanning, by the way, is essentially the same as the theory of muscle building, both of which derive from the theory of stress physiology. Recently, one of my phone clients expressed considerable astonishment that he was able to make so much uninterrupted progress with heavy duty, high intensity training. And I explained to him that such should not be a surprise, that there's no mystery to any of this, that people have been growing larger muscles for thousands of years, that we live in a knowable, rational universe of absolute clear-cut identity, guided by one set of never-changing principles, and that the cause-effect relationship between intense exercise and muscle growth has been understood for quite some time, even though the vast majority of self-styled experts here don't seem to grasp it. I concluded by explaining to this individual that it is reality and its laws, the laws of nature, that dictate what causes must be enacted to affect the buildup of muscle mass beyond normal levels, and that once these causes are understood, the task of building bigger muscles while requiring high intensity effort is actually rather simple. With a proper understanding of the law of causality, bodybuilding progress should be, will be immediate, continuous, and nothing short of spectacular through to the full actualization of one's muscular potential in one year or less. That's right, it is possible to actualize your full muscular potential in one year or less. While anyone should be able to actualize his muscular potential in one year, no one can guarantee exactly what his potential is, as the prime determinant of bodybuilding success is genetics.